Hey guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today, we've got a very special video for you. We're going to be going inside the belly of the beast, Daniel Defense, on a little tour today. This is going to be a great day. Let's do it. All right, guys, we are entering 300,000 square foot manufacturing facility right here. Now, there's certain processes that we can't show you, but we're going to give you a peek under the hood. Daniel Defense has been nice enough to let us come here and uh, show you a little bit of a, a look into their world here. All American made right here in Black Creek, Georgia. They manufacture most of their parts, really cool stuff. I mean, these guys are literally a manufacturer. They're not just assembling these things, they're making these things. So let's, uh, let's go have a look. So every Daniel Defense upper and lower starts as a 7075T6 forging. These forgings are produced to their exact specifications. And then of course they handle all the machining in-house from raw forging to the finished product. They've got a lot of very extensive quality control in place, multi-point inspections at every step of the way, which we'll discuss a little bit. There's certain manufacturing processes that we can't show you because not only the fixtures they use, but some of the machines they use is kind of trade secret type stuff. But they do use multi-axis mills and lathes. I mean, they have an 11 ax machine over there that can perform a lot of different machining operations without moving the part. That's the most important thing. Anybody can machine a part and then re-indicate the part, machine it, re-indicate it, machine it. But when you can take a part and put it into a machine and with one indication, be able to perform a wide variety of different machining operations, that really provides a much better level of consistency from start to finish. And that is a very big part of it. Um, they broach their own magazine wells here, obviously. So they've got a broaching machine that is very precise for doing the magazine wells. And the mag wells are held to really, really nice tolerances. Um, and of course, everything is inspected and checked at every step of the way. That way, if there's a manufacturing process that is maybe a little bit wrong, or maybe a, maybe a, a piece of tooling is a little bit wore out, or maybe uh, there's a, a minor flaw in a program, which isn't the case, but let's just say there's a minor issue, that issue can be corrected in real time before any of the bad parts make their way any further along the process. That allows them to save time and increase their efficiency and keep their costs reasonable. Because controlling costs is an important thing in an operation as big as this is. I mean, this is a 300,000 square foot facility, humongous facility with a lot going on. So if the more tightly you can control your manufacturing process, the better off you are, okay? All right, a lot of folks associate Daniel Defense with their rails. So their rail start is a 6061 T6 extrusion. These extrusions are custom ordered and alloyed to their specifications. They come in these long pieces. They put them in a mill turn and in one pass, they're cut and machined on one indication. So from start to finish, everything from raw extrusion to finished product is machined in one pass on a mill turn, which is awesome. They also use that type of machining process to make their sights. You can see it starts out as an extrusion and then it's finished machined. Makes for a really precise arrangement. When you have an extrusion or a piece of bar stock, bar material, you have a stock feeder. So like behind me, you see those gray boxes back there? They can load the stock into those machines and those machines automatically feed the bar stock into the mill turns, okay? And that allows for a relatively automated process in that regard. So whether it's an extrusion or whether it's a piece of bar stock, whatever the particular machine calls for in terms of the operation that it's set up to do, those stock feeders allow for a very efficient and automated setup in, in that particular regard. So whether it's a rail system or a bolt, whatever requires that stock to be fed, that's what those boxes do, feed that stock through the machine. All right, in this case, we've got a rail system. After all of their aluminum parts are cut, you know, obviously because of machining operation, you're gonna have a little bit of some sharp edges left over. So these parts come over to Neville's place here and Neville operates a variety of different tumblers to apply uh, you know, a nice deburring of all of the cut parts so you don't get any sharp edges. Different types of abrasives, different types of tumbling actions, but there's a ton of different things over here that allow them to get perfect finish on it prior to anodizing. Guys, uh, Daniel Defense does a great job with their barrels. They use a very awesome hammer forging process. All their barrels are hammer forged. And hammer forging is a process that's not extremely common in the United States. Their barrels start out as a blank of 4150. That is a specific alloy that they specify, obviously. 
All right, they come in, they get cut to length, they get turned to whatever profile um, that they need for the particular barrel that they're gonna be making. They get bored, and then they also get honed and polished really finely on the inside. That's very important because these mandrels are super, super hard, and they're, they're very, very well made, and they're very, very precise. And they're custom ground and polished to a very exacting tolerance. This then goes into the hammer forging machine. The hammer forging machine pounds the material against a, this precision mandrel, and then it basically forms the actual uh, barrel itself, okay? Now the Delta 5 barrels, you, you notice those marks on the outside of the barrel? So their bolt action barrels are exactly as they come out of the hammer forge, okay? So they're literally threaded on each end, they put the barrel extension on, in on the Delta 5, and what you see is what you get, and that's why on a hammer forge, you know, particularly their bolt action barrel, that's why you see those hammer forging marks on the outside. It has that very distinctive look. Now, if it's intended for a gas gun, then that hammer forged barrel comes out of the machine. It has to get taken over and get finished machine to give it the final contour that you wind up seeing, okay? So if it's a specific contour that a customer calls for, say they've got a big order and it's gotta be a certain profile, a certain weight, whatever design parameters need to be done to the barrel in terms of the finished machining, then that is done in a separate operation. You know, obviously drilling your gas ports, cutting down for the gas block, threading, all those operations will be done in a separate location after the uh, blanks themselves are out of the hammer forge. All right, we've got our piece of raw material that's been turned down to all the you know, specifications it needs to be. It's been bored, it's been polished and inspected. That goes into the hammer forge machine. Machine picks it up, completes the task. The barrel comes out. Not, it's not hot at all. You would think that this is fresh out of the hammer forge. You would think that it would be scorching hot from all that friction and all that pressure. Uh, you know, because literally we went from something that size to something this size. So it's literally swaging that material out as those hammers are going over it. And that mandrel is making a very precise rifling profile. All right, these uh, bores get rotted out really well, swabbed out, and they get gauged with a minor diameter bore gauge. After that, the barrels get dropped into a Hillco preservative and boxed up to go on to the next stage of the operation. Okay guys, we're here with a section of mill turns and Swiss screw machines. Now, what those types of machines are made to do and what they excel at is making small, precise parts rapidly and without having to re-indicate the part. So in this case, we can see we've got an AR-10 bolt or a DD-5 bolt, okay? We've got a muzzle device. So lots of small parts can be made on this particular type of machine quickly, efficiently, and without have, and again, without having to re-indicate the part. A one-pass machining operation. Now the cool thing about a Swiss screw machine is it can make lots of complex small parts. It can thread them, it can bore them, it can turn them, it can machine, it can do certain types of milling cuts all in one pass, which is really cool. So that, what's, that particular type of machining operation is unique to a mill turn or a Swiss screw machine. You can see here we've got gas blocks. This is a little bit more of an intricate gas block design where you've got the front of the gas block and a threaded portion in the rear with a precision cut right there. All of those things have to be cut to a certain amount of precision. Muzzle devices. Okay, bolt carrier groups can be done on a Swiss machine. Very cool stuff. You can see here's another complex type of part. This particular part right here could even be as simple as a part for a fixture. Let's say if they designed a special fixture for their Cerakote booth, or if they designed a special fixture maybe for the gunsmiths over in the assembly area, they could they could engineer and design that fixture and churn them out in their own facility. Really cool stuff. You can see here, baffles, you know, a baffle arrangement, anything like that could also be cut on a machine like this. Anything that requires a small, precise machining operation in one pass can be done on that type of machine. Okay guys, I know it doesn't look like much right here, but this is where a lot of the magic happens. This is where the tool makers and engineers are at. So anything from building a fixture to making a, a parameter change on a machine 
to prototyping, anything that requires reprogramming or any of that is done right here in this area. And these guys are some of the you know hidden heroes at Daniel Defense because these guys, trust me, when something goes wrong with these machines, there, there's definitely an issue to be taken care of because that could be a, a real drag in productivity and everything. But not to mention that, but, and, and I may speak out of turn here by saying this, but it's important when you're a company the size of Daniel Defense, you have all this stuff going on, it's important that you make a lot of your own tooling because one, you don't have to rely on anybody else to sub that stuff out. So, you know, you call up Joe Blow's machine, co machine shop, so, who is, I'm sure, very capable but, oh, I'll get to it in six months. Oh, I'll get to it in eight months. You know, your projects will get put to the back burner. If you have your own production capabilities, you can go, no, we need this put to the front line right now. You can get stuff done right this minute. So everything from building holding fixtures to, you know, maybe an occasional part for a machine, making uh, parameter and design changes, all of that can be done on the fly and prototyped right in house so that they can keep that productivity high and keep their, uh, keep their lines moving. It's very important. Okay, so we all know that Daniel Defense applies Serico, and here I was thinking they had some team of like really cool high-speed guys that were back here, you know, applying the Serico. They have a Serico robot. That's how cool they are. So the machine applies the Serico and their appropriate finishes that they offer. Pretty cool stuff. All of these systems are are very uh, controlled and exacting. Everything from the way they blast everything to the way that they uh, degrease all the parts. They've got a big oven that they cure everything in. The machine applies the Cerakote. And these big racks here, they go out into the oven and they get cured up. Right now we've got a rack over here that just came out of the curing oven. Let's have a look at those. All right, so we've got a rack of parts that just came out of the curing oven. You can see this big oven back here behind us. Um, Daniel Defense actually uses special Cerakote colors that are specific just to their business. This is Tornado Gray. Deep Woods Green, Mill Spec Plus. Okay, so a brown, a green, and a gray. But these, these colors are specific just to Daniel Defense from Serico. So that's cool, they've got a machine that sprays it, they got a giant curing oven, and then they have these racks. And the cool thing about Daniel Defense, all these fixtures, a lot of the fixtures they use here in their uh, facility are fixtures that they actually make themselves. So they design the tooling and the fixtures and manufacture it here themselves as well, which is really cool. Okay, I'm in the assembly area. Here we got some folks putting together some Delta 5 bolt actions. Those middle rows right there is where they assemble uppers and lowers. And uh, it is so cool to see just the, the pride that these folks put into their work. And it seems like every single person that I run into in this facility, everybody's so friendly and they really love what they're doing. And it's so cool to see the amount of care and precision they take when it comes to putting these things together. They really do seem to take a lot of pride in what they do, and it really does show, I believe, in the quality of the product. And it takes coming into a place like this to appreciate what these gun manufacturers are doing. And uh, Daniel Defense is definitely no different. They really love what they do, and you can just really tell when you talk to these folks and just see what they're all about. It's, it's really cool stuff. And they got some really interesting processes, too, that they use to really uh, help with like productivity and to you know really save time and everything. Really cool stuff. All right, got some Delta 5s going out here. Final assembly and functions test. Got them all racked up, ready to go down to get boxed up. Looking good. All right, we saw a couple of Delta 5s that are ready to go over there. Also with the M4s, doing some function testing over here, making sure everything fits together like it's supposed to. And then they go back here and they, every uh, gun gets live fired before it leaves the building. So bolt action, semi-auto, doesn't matter. They all get a functions test and a test fire. Cool stuff. All right, so once they've been test fired and the QA uh, process has been taken care of, then we get ready to go down to shipping. And right here we can see a whole bunch of these rifles ready to go, everything from Delta 5, DDM4s, a couple of pistols down there, SBRs, anything that's in the workflow, it gets uh, put into this queue to be boxed up and shipped out. Pretty simple process overall. A lot of stages and quality control and different assurance that's put into the product as they go though. It's pretty cool stuff. All right, guys, I'm pulling Joe away here for just a second from his job. He is the guy that if you have a warranty issue, he's your man. He's going to be the guy that's going to be checking out your gun if you send it in. Uh, Joe, just give him a just very brief explanation of Daniel Defense's warranty. Basically is 100% customer satisfaction. So whether the weapon itself malfunctions or you have something that 
you happen to do and it didn't work out for you, send it in, call our customer service guys, they'll send up an RMA and I'll take care of it for you. I'm pretty sure you wind up seeing situations where people use like the improper tools for like taking something right. apart and get right. like, right. you know, and mess up the receiver. And normally they don't send that in for that particular one, but if I do see it, I'll go ahead and take care of it. You know, that makes sense because you don't want something going back out the door that might could potentially Correct. be unsafe. Correct. I'll also check your bulk area, make sure the gas keys aren't leaking. If they are, I'll go ahead and replace that for you. Very cool. Just, just to make sure. Outstanding. Joe, uh, thanks for giving me just a little bit of your time today. Awesome. I know uh, I know your job is uh, a very important job because, you know, that's where the rubber meets the road. It's one thing to make something and have it sent out the door Correct. and everything's good, but then when there becomes a bit of an issue or a problem, or let's just say from the customer's perspective, he's not satisfied, he or her is not satisfied, right. that, that's a pretty important role to make right. sure that, that the service after the sale, I suppose. Will I want to do my best to make sure they are. Outstanding. Thanks, Joe. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you. All right, guys. So that's a bit of a look under the hood here at Daniel Defense. I definitely want to thank them for letting me come out here today and uh, show off some of their processes. Now, there's obviously things that we can't show. There's a lot more detail, uh, obviously, that goes on behind the scenes. Certain manufacturing processes, we can't show too much detail, but we thought it'd be fun to show you guys uh, what goes into making a Daniel Defense rifle. Um, I think that hammer forging process is so neat. And it's really cool to be able to see a hammer forge working in person. There's not a lot of them out there. I thought that would be a fun process to show you guys. Uh, we are going to have Daniel Defense come visit us and bring out a Delta 5, probably a DD5, uh, some of the uh, DDM4s, probably some of the 300 Blackouts and things like that. So we're going to get a variety of different guns, have them bring up, and we'll do you know, a little bit of a showcase and show off some of their stuff. I'm really excited to see how the Delta 5 holds up. Uh, we got to shoot it the other day. And it was just a great handling bolt action. Of course, with the Hammer Forge barrel, very accurate. Uh, this one takes Remington 700 pattern triggers. Um, I, you know, one thing I, I didn't have time to mention in the tour, I do like the fact on uh, the Delta 5 that they use the type of bolt head that they do. It makes uh, for it to be able to handle like particulates and dust and debris really well. You get a bolt action that's really, really finely fitted. Yeah, they might be a little more accurate, but then you wind, uh, wind up running into issues where you may run into potential uh, issues in the field with uh, tolerance and clearance and dirt and debris and things like that. So they really found a fine line between a gun that, that can handle itself out in the field, but also maintain the accuracy that a lot of people come to expect uh, from a gun in its price range. And I've dealt with Daniel Defense guns a good bit. I've sold a lot of Daniel Defense guns to different people over the years working at Moss. Um, I've, I've had an opportunity to shoot a wide variety of their uh, guns within their range over the last couple of days here and it's been great and they handle really nice. I was really happy with that DD5, really accurate 308. I mean we were shooting it out to 500 yards and I, I would definitely pit that accuracy against my scar, no problem. Really nice there. So it's going to be interesting to have them come down and we'll do a little bit of work and do some accuracy testing. Uh, guys, thanks for watching today. We hope you enjoyed today's uh, showcase. We always love to come and check out different uh, manufacturers. It's always fun to get a look under the hood. And I definitely want to thank them for giving me the opportunity to come over here and uh, take up a bit of their time and show you guys around. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Definitely want to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters. You guys are wonderful. Thank you very much. Those of you who purchase merchandise over on the website, shirts, anything over on the store, thank you. Uh, those of you who purchase man cans to help support the channel, thank you very much for supporting us. Have a great day. Many more videos on the way, and we'll see you next time.